Hi guys, in today's video, we are going to set up a smooth scroll in Webflow and create a nice scrolling effect using scroll trigger. So let's go. For the moment, we have a simple design, uh, very simple, actually two sections, and we want to create a scrolling animation, um, kind of a panel effect. So we want our bottom section to go on top of the first one when we scroll. Um, we have our page ready on Webflow, as you can see, very simple, two sections. Um, so it's looking like that. And we'll be using a template I already showed in a previous video that allows us to import some JavaScript in Webflow without having to publish our website every time. So let me just show you uh, what we can do with this template. So let's publish the website. Let's start the dev server. And I showed everything about this template in the previous video that I'm going to link in the description. So if you want to follow along and use this method, I invite you to take a look at the video and you'll see it's very convenient and very easy to use. And so let's just take a look at the website. You can see that we have some message right there. Let's add a console log. So let's say hello, for example. And we can see that our code in VS Code is working in Webflow. And I can, let's say, change this right there. So I can say this work. And I just need to save in my code editor to uh, run my code in Webflow. And it's really convenient because we will be creating animations and we will want to tweak some values and try different things without having to publish our website every time and to wait every time for our website to be published. And it's really convenient to use this method because um, it allows us to tweak different values, to try different animations without having to publish our website every time and to wait you know, every time for the website to be published because it's um, taking quite some time. So yeah, we'll be using this method. Um, if you don't want to use this one, don't worry, you can still use the Webflow code editor so you can write all your code before the end of the body tag between two script tags and it will work uh, fine as well. So yeah, let's start. So we'll be using this scroll, which is looking really nice. Um, and yeah, let's check the documentation. So I think that the first thing we want to do is to install it. So yeah, so we can use the script tag or the npm method. I'm going to be I'm going to use the npm method. So let's stop the server. I'm copying this, pasting this into my terminal. So let's I'm just going to show you um, how to do that. But you can go to your code editor, open a new terminal, paste it, and it's installing it. Um, so now I can start everything. I can start my dev server and PM on dev. Let's refresh. Everything is still working. And I can uh, set up the smooth scroll. So let's just keep everything simple. Let's copy and paste this. So this is the basic setup. So let's put that at the top. Uh, all right, let's save. And yeah, it's working. Uh, I don't know if you can if you can see it, but the, the scroll is now smooth. Then we can see that we have a lot of information right there. And it's coming from this line of code. I actually don't need it, so I can delete that. And yeah, in 10 seconds, we have a smooth scroll on Webflow. And it's really pleasant to use, really, uh, yeah, just, just really nice. And we can see that we have different parameters right there. I don't need to change any of them. So I will keep everything as it is for the moment. So now that we have our smooth scroll, we can start creating our animation. And for that, we'll be using GZAP and scroll trigger. So the first thing I want to do is to install GZAP. So again, we need to stop the server and to install GZAP, it's npm i n gzap. Um, I won't press enter because GZAP is already installed on um, 
the package is already installed, but you can just press enter, install this app, and move on. Then let's start the dev server again, npm run dev, and just like we imported Lenis, we need to import gsap. So let's say import gsap from gsap, and we can import scroll trigger, which is a gsap plugin, uh, like that, I think, from gsap scroll trigger. Let's just console log this to make sure we did not do any mistake. All right, let's refresh. Okay, so everything is working fine. So we installed this app, we imported it, we imported scroll trigger. Now we need to register the plugin. Um, it's just something we need to do. We need to do gzap.register plugin and then scroll trigger, like that. And there's so many things we can do with gzap. It's hard for me to show everything. So I will just uh, create a simple animation to show you the basic uh, of gzap and then we'll create our nice scrolling animation. So to create an animation in gzap, we need to do gzap, let's say two. Uh, and let's say I want to animate this section. So it's section image. So I say I'm saying section image. And then let's say I want to animate the opacity. I'm going to add a duration so we just have time to see it, let's say. And just like that it's working. And what we're doing is that we are animating this element to an opacity of zero and it's, um, the duration is two seconds and I can say cheese up from and you can see that we are when we reload the page our element um, starts from an opacity of zero to an opacity of one and the last thing we can do is from two and we can say we want to animate our element from an opacity of zero to an opacity of let's say 0 0.5 and it's taking still let's say one second this time and yeah this is a very basic animation in gsap and from that we can do a lot of things and in our case we want to create a scrolling animation so let's move on so what we want to do is that we want to animate um, this image so we want to animate this image on the y axis so we want to move this image down as we are scrolling the page so let's do that so let's say cheese up so we want to animate our section image so this is the same element and we want to animate it on the y axis and we can say y percent and let's say 100 and what we are doing is that let's just refresh, let's add a duration, and let's see what we have. We can see that our element is animating down. It's, it's going down uh, 100 VH. All right, so it's working. But we want to do that when we are scrolling the page. So we can add scroll trigger, then open an object, and then we, have, uh, we need three things. We need a trigger element, we need a starting point and we need an ending point. All right, so let's see. First, we need a trigger. So the trigger element is the element that is going to trigger the animation. In our case, we want this to be this section. Um, so we want that our animation starts when this section comes into view. So let's target this section. So let's go back to a flow. Let's say, so it's section content. Let's add the dot and section content. And we want our animation to start when the top of our trigger, which is the bottom of our screen. So let's say top and bottom. And we want our animation to end when the top of our trigger, which is the top of our screen. I'm going a bit fast on this because it will be easier to understand when we see it live. And the last thing I want to add is crop, and I want to set it to true. 
and it's just a way for us to uh, reverse the animation so to play the animation when we are scrolling up and down so let's save let's refresh and let's see okay so we have an animation working but it's looking kind of weird we can see that it's going down and then my element is catching up and it's cooking and it's because we need to add an easing to our animation so for the moment we have an easing and we don't want one so we need to say is and to and set it to none and now we can see that we have panel effect and like i said our element or our section image is going down 100 vh and it's starting when the top of our trigger reaches the bottom of our screen and it's stopping when the top of the trigger reaches the top of the screen and let's change to center just to have a, another example so it's starting like that and it's the animation is ending when the uh, top of the trigger which is the center of the screen and yeah just like that we have a cool animation with a smooth scroll on webflow and we don't have a lot of lines of code and all of these are parameters so we didn't even need to write that and as you can see it's really simple and i would like to show you actually one more thing because that is cool to have one panel effect but let's say I want to have a, f a page with a lot of different sections and to have that effect on all of my sections. So for example, let's say I want to have that uh, and that. Um, yeah, let's keep it that way. And let's see, so if I refresh, we can see that it's working for the first one, but then we have something weird. Uh, and it's because we are targeting an element with the class of section image, but we have actually two sections with, with this class, so everything is kind of broken and we need to find another way. So let's comment this out and first let's target all of our sections. So we have a way of doing this in GSAP, and so let's create an array, let's say section and GSAP to array and let's say I want to target all of my sections so let's just console log the section so we can see what we have all right and we can see that we have four sections so we have all of our section right there so now what I can do is I can say sections up for each um, section and then I can have function copy this and it's a bit more advanced but it's really useful and you will see that we have a cool effect very easy so i just need to tweak something so first i don't want to target section image i want to target all of my sections not at once but one after another so I'm targeting my section and then I want to change my trigger. I want my trigger to be the animated element. So let's say section as well. So we need to change the starting and the ending point. So let's say I'm animating this element. So I want to animate it, but I want my animation to start when the bottom of my trigger, which is the bottom of the page and I want to end it when the bottom reaches the top. So it would be something like bottom, bottom and bottom top let's see what we have and yeah now it's working and just like that we can create a full page using this effect and i don't need to bother creating um, a lot of different animations with only one animation i can have all of my sections animated and let's just duplicate this to see that it's still working all right let's refresh and yeah it's still working and i would like to show you one last thing and we can see that we have an infinite set to false in our lenis parameter so let's say true 
and let's see what happens. You can see that we have our scroll bar right there. If I scroll and I reach the bottom, we scroll back to the top. So it's cool. Same thing if I scroll top, I'm coming back to the bottom. But um, it's, it's snapping, it's not really smooth. And what we can do is that we can duplicate our first section and put it at the bottom. So we want our first section to be the same as the last one. And let's just publish one last time. Let's refresh. Let's take a look at the scroll bar. We can see that if I'm scrolling top, now we have a seamless infinite scroll. And it's really cool. Uh, we have an infinite scroll with the panel effect on Webflow and I can scroll down and I can scroll up. It's working either way. So yeah, really nice uh, of uh, Studio Afraid to add such cool features to their, to their scrolls. Um, and yeah, with something like 40 lines of code, we have a really cool website. So yeah, I hope you liked the video, that uh, it was not too complicated or too, too boring. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to, to let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to, uh, to see what you, you guys think about that. And yeah, see ya.